Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so uh, another, what I would, to me is an important uh, topic uh, is about on the technology and the programming front. Uh, right now there is jupiter.org, it's the IDE for qu kind of quant research. I think it's pretty well the most popular way of doing it for even if it's machine learning. Uh, this, is, this, this project is very powerful. And for those that are listening, it's spelled J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. Okay, so that's Jupiter, J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. And it's with interactive computing. And um, let me just go over the article here. So this is a tutorial from them. Um, and uh, I found it quite interesting uh, in a number of ways. Um, they list a, a number of projects they have that enable you to integrate either C or C++ into your back end of the Jupyter projects that you're working on when it comes to speeding or you know trying to speed up your your performance on your Python side. And so there's a couple of projects that you can use to integrate all of this. Now, I'm not an expert in Jupyter. I'm probably played with it a tiny bit, but I'm nowhere close to being where I want to be. But I do think down the line, this is where I'll spend a lot of my time as I get more uh, confident with this thing. So, uh, obviously the Jupyter interfaces with Python, and with machine learning being huge, you're probably gonna use Python as a way to fool around with your machine learning libraries, namely probably something like TensorFlow or Keras. Now, the interesting thing is, is that, um, with C++, uh, productivity is a big problem because it's not an easy language, but the modern C++ like version 14, 17, and soon 20 make it a more modern way of looking at things. Like for me, I'm working with uh, Java. The only reason I'm using Java is because the broker that I want to use is Dukas Coffee. So I'm, you know, all their APIs are done in Jupyter, uh, in Java. So that's that's why I got to work with Java. Otherwise, I, I'd use this combination of C++ and and Python. So um, I'm not going to get into what Jupyter is, um, but uh, here's some of the pro, pro, uh, products of open source. I think these are all open source. So you have Zeus as an implementation of the Ju Jupyter uh, kernel project. It's not a kernel itself, but a library that facilitates the authoring of kernels. And, all, and other applications making use of the Jupyter kernel protocol. So um, here we can, for domain specific languages like SQL flavors, that'd be very interesting if you can integrate that into Redis, because I, I just really love playing with, uh, with Redis. And I'm sure somebody out there may have developed something. Zeus based kernels can be easily provided a backend for Ju Jupyter Interactive widgets. Hmm. Then there's uh, Zeus Ceiling, C++, um, used at CERN, interpret in the context of the root data analysis environment. So first example of, the, of a kernel on we have implementing Zeus Ceiling, a pure C++ kernel. So you can use C++ for interpreting. Oh wow, and includes all the features like polymorphism, templates, lambdas. Um, so it's an interpreter using C++ syntax within Jupyter. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I guess you can integrate it somehow with uh, Python as well. Uh, so here's, and it has C++ uh, version 11 and 14 support. Uh, fetching content on the CPP uh, reference. Uh, wow. Pretty cool. Um, okay, so we have now, uh, is this X widgets, widgets? Important feature of Jupyter are the Jupyter interactive widgets. They allow the user to build graphical interfaces and interactive data visualization in line in the Jupyter notebooks. That's important, in line, right in the, in, I guess you call it interpreter if you don't know the Jupyter notebook. Um, for those that may have followed me quite a while ago, with uh, the combination of uh, Simulink, Math, MATLAB, and MuPad. 
very similar, but you're not paying for it. This is, again, open source. It's free. More is not just a collection of widgets, but a framework that can be built upon arbitrary visual components. So we have here, I'm not going to name off the, um, the uh, projects, but we have here 2D plotting with D3, which is JavaScript. I, I've looked at a lot of different um, frameworks out there for charting, and I will say D3 is very impressive. 3D scene visualization with 3JS, uh, map vi visualization you don't care about, um, you, know, you know, trading 3D plotting and volume rendering, that will be potential and molecule, molecular visualization. So um, I don't think we need that in the world of trading, but again, I've, I, I, I've seen many different creative things. So we have here Xplot exper Experimental C++ Backend for BQ Plot 2D Plotting Library. Enables the API grammar and the constructs of grammar graphics in C++. Uh, so here in one of the visuals, we have an example of changing the data of scatter plot dynamically to change the chart. Wow. I mean, again, for, 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 for uh, open source, this is, this is amazing. Okay, so now we get into, guess what, Xtensor. C++ library meant for numerical analysis with multi-dimensional array extensions. Extendable expression system enabling lazy NumPy style broadcasting. API following idioms of the C++ library tools to minimum array of built upon X tensor. So they're using NumPy and I love NumPy myself, which is probably one of the more most popular um, Python packages out there. Uh, so you can use modern C++ techniques. This includes Templar expressions, closure, semantics, lazy evaluated library, da, da, da. Let's see, here's some examples. Um, I thought this was to do with Tensor, um, the library, the machine learning library from Google. Or sorry, TensorFlow, but uh, so counterpart NumPy, FFTW library, robot operating binding. Okay, so XTensor Python bindings for the Python programming language, allowing the use of NumPy arrays in place, in place, using the NumPy C API and the PyBind library. Powerful stuff. XTensor. Wow, so you can integrate with R if you want to, allowing use of R arrays in place. So it may be useful for those in R. Binder project, which is part of the Jupyter. Deployment of uh, containerized Jupyter notebooks from a GitHub repository together. Manifest listing. So you can integrate with Xtensor, Xwidget, and Xplot. Now this one's an interesting one. Jupyter Hub. Multi-user infrastructure underlying open-wide deployment of Jupyter-like binder, but also smaller deployments of for authenticated users. So this is like a repository of, of other uh, Jupyter projects. Uh, you need to be authenticated, but that's no big deal. What service is available to them? Jupyter Hub deployments for several hundreds of users have been done in various ways and and where the C++ kernel is also installed for students to use. So there's some big deal uh, there with C++ integration. I gotta say that's pretty powerful. Um, let me know if you got uh, any comments or stuff, but uh, coming along quite nice. All right, later.